if it's not safety, why are they regulating it? They're regulating it for a number of reasons. And this is, we've got big players in the market like Google and Amazon. And Google and Amazon, they're not going to be in the drone delivery business. Uh, that, that, this is a kind of, um, it's a bit of a Trojan horse. Google's saying, oh, drone delivery is the future. We want, you know, and they've convinced the regulators and the politicians that drone delivery is going to be a huge industry. It's going to generate billions of dollars in money, therefore billions of dollars in taxes. And other venture capitalists are throwing money at it because it's, it's like the dot-com boom. Wow, it's the internet. We don't know how it works, but it's got to make money because it's so big. And that's what drone delivery, everyone's pitching drone delivery is the future. So the way Google and Amazon and some of the other companies intend to use this to their advantages, they've created the belief that drone delivery is going to be a thing by running all these trials and things. Uh, but they're not going to be delivering with drones. They're going to be providing the infrastructure, the UTM that everybody will have to use to fly. It's going to be pay to fly. In fact, Air Maps, the, the crowd that make the little app for your phone, did you see the tweet they put out? No, saying that, out. Uh, oh, they put out a tweet saying that our technology will enable governments to tax drone use and charge for takeoffs and landings. That's it. <laughs> right? That's they, they withdrew the tweet. They deleted the tweet the day after, mm -hmm. but they put it out there. The intention is very clear, and they're trying to provide a mechanism by where the government can do that. And Google and Amazon, Amazon doesn't make money, as much money out of its retail operations as it does out of its online services. It's, it's mm -hmm. Amazon Web Services and all those server farms. That's where they make their real money, by providing a service to other companies that do the work. And that's what they want to do with this whole drone industry. Pretend you're going to be using drones for the delivery, give the industry a degree of credibility because it's got Amazon behind it, and then go to the, the decision makers and say, you need a UTM, a, a traffic management system, so it's all safe. And so that's where we come in. Ah, but we can't have all these pesky hobbyists in there. It makes it unsafe. Or if we're going to have them there, they must be fitted with remote ID and they must have all this registration and everything. And basically, it's just a way of making it so untenable that the hobbyists will be, the goal is to have them flying in freers. You know, like when, with the radio wave analogy again, when it started, anyone could broadcast anything on any frequency. Then as the spectrum got more cluttered, now if you're uh, not a commercial operator, you've got CB radio uh, is about the only thing you've got and 2.4 gigs, the only things you can use without paying a lot of money. And it'll be like the freers for flying your models. You can go to a freer and fly there, that's fine. Uh, but other than that, you're going to have to pay money to do this, money to do that, and all this sort of stuff. It's just a way of controlling and regulating all the airspace so that these service providers can step in and say, you know, we want to charge everyone this much to take off, this much to land, and this much per minute to fly. In fact, if you look at that remote ID original proposal, the NPRM, mm -hmm. it was all about tracking. And once you're tracking craft, and you couldn't even take off until you got permission, according to the original proposal, you couldn't take off until you were cleared to take off. And if that meant paying a dollar, you'd have to pay a dollar. Mm -hmm. And I've heard people like the AMA saying, oh, we've scored a victory because this is nowhere near as bad as it was, and we've, we've got rid of the network component of remote ID thanks to our, our submissions that had nothing to do with it. If you look carefully at the final rule, if you search for the phrase, at this time, you'll find it mentioned so often through that document because what happened was that their technology partner said, oh, we can't actually deliver this ubiquitous communication you need for remote ID, mm -hmm. so you, we can't do it. So the FAA said, okay, we won't do it at this time, but you can guarantee as soon as that technology becomes available, they'll roll it back out again and then we'll have pay to fly and Airmaps sitting there waiting to, to clip the ticket and provide the governments with the mechanism they need to do it. And we are just unfortunate, you know, people caught in the wheels because what's going to happen and this is my prediction hopefully in 10 years time i'll still be alive and you'll be able to say i was right or wrong is that there isn't going to be all these drone deliveries this is just a fictitious thing why would you use a drone to deliver a pizza i mean if people complain if you fly a drone in your own backyard they're going to want amazon drones flying overhead every minute of the day our skies will not be darkened with swarms of drones that's not going to happen and there will be special niche cases for drone delivery, you know, medical supplies or, or human organs or something where you need to get from one point to another point really quickly and it doesn't happen often. It's happening in Africa with Zipline, where there's special case, special use cases for drone delivery, but urban suburban drone delivery, it's not going to happen the way it is predicted. Yeah, you'll have drone delivery. And I've mentioned this before, but if you order something from Amazon, it'll be delivered by drone, but do you know how? You'll be okay, sitting there at your desk or in your office, your, your phone will go, there'll be a message that says delivery in five minutes at your address, and it gives you a pin number. You walk outside and a little self-driving vehicle pulls up. No driver, just a little right. vehicle pulls yeah. up. No, you punch right. in your pin number, opens a door, you take your package, it goes on and delivers some more. It can carry hundreds of packages. It can carry a ton of deliveries. And if it breaks down, it just stops on the side of the road. It doesn't fall out of the sky and kill somebody. 
and, and it's that, cost effective. Well, I was going to say that is that is also like the the cost of driving something. Like once you get once you get distribution down, right? The final mile is very expensive, and so Amazon has been putting. Uh, you know, all of these distribution centers all over the place as they try to get out from under FedEx and US, U, UPS here locally, here in the United States. Um, and right now, you know, it, it the, the distribution center for me, I don't know, about 15, 20 miles that way, it's not really cost effective to fly a one pound package 15 to 20 miles. Especially given the, you know, the idea that if there's bad winds, they can't fly. If it crashes, no matter what it is, it's, it's a write-off. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, a car, a car makes total yeah. sense. Yeah. Right? It's already being done in the UK. It's a place called um, Milton Keynes. And there are mm -hmm. trials. They've got these cute little things that roll around town and delivering packages everywhere. And it works. It works really well. And it's low cost. And it's low risk. That's the main thing. You know, the worst that can happen is it stops and holds up traffic. Uh, it's not like, I mean, the liabilities involved, for example, if an Amazon drone crashes through the roof of your house and, and hurts somebody, th that's that won't bad. be sustainable. And so it, this is a myth that's being perpetrated by companies that don't intend to deliver by drone. They just want to create the illusion that's going to happen. They can say, government, you need the infrastructure. You need us to build it for you. And governments just write out big checks. We've seen that happen so often before. In the UK, in the UK, when they were told you need to have a registration database for all the drone flyers and model flyers, they spent four million pounds to build a database that holds a few hundred thousand entries. Seriously, you can do that on a Raspberry Pi on a bedside table for, <laughs> for 120 bucks. You know, got a couple done there. <laughs> and even after spending four million quid on on that database, they still can't import data from the British Model Flying Association says so to put the numbers over automatically. It's like, seriously, when governments are involved, money is no object. And these people know money is no object. And they're building up a lovely little scenario where the government will write them a blank check to provide a service. And of course, once they've spent that money providing a service for drone deliveries that will never happen, the government's going to say, oh my goodness, we need to pay for this. Oh, hey, these recreational users are still flying. We'll get the money from them.